this will be the uh, non-spoiler uh, review of Rise of Skywalker. Uh, the more spoiler review, we'll go into more detail and give more criticism. This is just basically going to be a very even-handed attempt to go through what's good and bad in the uh, picture. So, you have to discuss a little bit about the plot um, just to get situated in the story. So, it begins very quickly with Kylo uh, killing a bunch of raiders on uh, Mustafar. It doesn't look like Mustafar because Mustafar is supposed to be volcanic, but uh, it is what it is. Um, he has some weird moonwalking killing. It's it's a little strange. In any case, he grabs a wayfinder. Um, if you know more Star Wars lore, it's actually supposed to be a holocron, but here it's a wayfinder. The wayfinder gets him to Palpatine, who apparently has been in this uh, planet called Exegol. And uh, this is probably one of the highlights of the film. You see these huge dark sets, these uh, tons of followers and loyalists in the background. And um, this, I guess, explains how he survives because we never get a real explicit explanation. And then Palpatine um, very quickly conjures up a zombie fleet. Um, yeah, that's that's literally what happens. He just conjures a space fleet, um, and he makes Kylo a proposition that if he kills Rey, he will have access to the fleet, and the uh, First Order will become this kind of basically zombified Final Order, and he'll uh, conquer the galaxy. On the uh, Resistance side, uh, as the trailer shows, uh, Rey is doing a lot of training. Um, she talks to Leia. Um, I'm going to leave it to each person. Uh, they say they didn't use too much CGI, but I think some CGI is noticeable, but they did the best they could with uh, the Leia scenes. Um, and I ironically, it does work with the plot that they're trying to do with Palpatine. Uh, meanwhile, Poe's leading a secret mission, um, which is a little confusing, but basically the punchline is that they discover that Palpatine is alive. Um, and it introduces more into the... Star Wars lore with uh, this thing called light speed skipping. Um, it's a, it's a very good sequence, but um, for whatever reason, that's it. They just do the sequence. It's very beautiful. It's well done, and it's over. There's also some like nice little character bits when uh, Poe gets back. He uh, he fights with Rey, um, saying she's wasting her time. She's doing too much training. They need her to go out there. And I think this is where things are going to start to break for most people because out of nowhere, after Ray hears that Palpatine has returned, she says, oh, I've been reading in the sacred Jedi text that Luke had been searching for Palpatine and was looking for an item that would help him get to Palpatine. And that doesn't really make a lot of sense given what we had in The Last Jedi and how much the film retcons or attacks or critiques The Last Jedi is, you know, you can't really talk about it without getting into spoilers, so that'll be in the spoiler section, but there is surprisingly a ton, a ton of allusions to The Last Jedi, so they're sort of very selectively picking pieces, but this is where the story really begins when they're going to go on this quest to find these items to get to Palpatine, and it's it's really unclear, but basically Chewie, Poe, Finn, Ray and BB-8 set out to uh, this desert planet and um, Kylo's going to try to uh, go after them as well because he doesn't intend to kill Ray. He says he knows more about Ray than she suspects and he wants Ray to join him and both of them are going to kill Palpatine and rule the galaxy. So that's so they have these kind of convergent missions but for different reasons. You know, they want the Wayfinder to find Palpatine and stop him whereas you know, Kylo wants uh, Rey to team up with him. Um, and I will say there's going to be a ton of old characters who are introduced. They come in, they come out, depending on when the plot needs them. In some cases, it's going to work for people. Um, I'm sure for other people, it'll be... They're just pushing it way too far. I think you can say without spoiling that uh, people like Wedge show up. Um, the Ewoks show up. They, they, they don't, they're not there for a very long time. Um, overall, they, they did work for me. I think for most people, it'll, it'll, you know, not be offensive, but it sort of doesn't add very much 
to what is going on with the main story. So again, it'll be kind of like an individual response to how much they're overdoing nostalgia. One thing though that is very problematic is how many times they seem to be putting people in danger but don't follow through and then other times they do put people in danger and they do follow through with it. So in some cases it seems like the the threat level is very real, it's very palpable and then in other cases it it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's just we know so nothing is going to happen. Um, and this is both a good and bad thing because one of the probably highlights, at least for me, is that 3CPO has a very heroic storyline, but it's kind of undermined by the way the plot is moving. So that's a little disappointing. But again, if you wanted a lot of 3CPO, this film really will deliver at, this, at that end. Probably the more problematic aspect is that after the midway point, it really just becomes the Ray Kylo Palpatine story. This is already in the trailer, so hopefully it's not a spoiler that they do eventually confront one another. I'm not going to say the conclusion of it, but um, I think they're trying to satisfy both people. Some people think, you know, Ray is too overpowered, Kylo lost too many times, so they're going to try to deal with both sides. I don't think either side is going to be entirely happy. And the fight itself is really not the point, although it's, I think, well done. Um, the special effects in the fights are, they're not great, but they're adequate for what they're supposed to be. Um, and again, I can't tell what's going to happen. I will say that certain, again, old characters come in. Now, it's not really a spoiler that Rey does meet Luke as a Force ghost. That's just there, because, you know, the reaction with The Last Jedi was so, so negative that... Clearly, they were going to bring Luke back. And it's actually surprising that they didn't really include him more in the advertising because they said Palpatine was going to return. And Palpatine shows up right at the very beginning. Um, and so Luke is there. He, he does do a couple of things, um, but he's not there a long time. He, he does play a little bit of a critical role, but it's actually surprising given the title. It's not a much major role, and again, I'm, I'm dealing non-spoiler, but uh, if you know more about the production, you know he did have a bigger role, but for whatever reason, they just, they made it a much smaller role than was needed for the uh, story and the uh, plot. So, Ray, after being, cons you know, sort of mentored by Luke, is able to find the way to confront Palpatine, and Kylo redeems himself. I'm not going to go into details, but he also finds a way to, uh, you know, overcome the dark side, and he joins Rey. 